Joe had the dark hair, dark eyes, and John was uh, light hair and blue eyes. They were Eagle Scouts together. They did everything almost the same time. They even got married two months apart. And now this, they're together again. They had recovered this piece of glass and a piece of the lobby. They put it together and they had my son's names etched in there. John and Jan Vigiano call their lost sons our Twin Towers. Joe, an elite emergency services detective, and John, the fire dad's calling. They would stop in and say, you know, Dad, I gotta borrow this, I gotta borrow that. And I'd say, well, what do you think this is? He says, Daddy Depot. I was told I couldn't have children. And um, when I had my first son, he was born on the Immaculate Conception. John arriving on December 8th, 1964, a Catholic holiday honoring the Mother of Christ. And I figured God gave us children for a little while. And he took them back. He has his reasons. Yet for 12 months, the Vigianos have struggled to find a satisfactory reason for their cruel double loss. Yeah, you're right, it is cruel. But Mama said it best. God didn't take our sons. This wasn't an act of God. The anger is reserved for an elusive terrorist. Osama bin Laden's a coward. If he was the warrior that he says he is, he wouldn't send young men and women to blow up other people. He should have flew one of the planes. I could almost respect a man that did it for having the guts to do it. The Vigianos have personified guts since they watched the towers fall on TV, rushing from Deer Park to downtown Manhattan's One Police Plaza, sleeping for word on their boys. On September 13th, John Vigiano ventured for the first time to Ground Zero. When I walked up on uh, Church Street, I knew my sons were gone. There was no way they were going to survive. But Vigiano alive for his wife, who resisted a police official's offer to provide a hotel room. I just looked at him and I says, why would you want me to go to a hotel? I says, my kids are on slabs of concrete. I can't sleep in the bed. Jen did not return to Deer Park for three and a half weeks. Her husband, a retired fire captain with 36 years experience, promised her he'd be cautious as he began an eight-month vigil at the ruins. And I said, look, I'm not a fool. I'm the only one left. I will not do something foolish. He found Joe on October 23rd. Their youngest son, 34, the only detective in his emergency services squad, too, a cop who'd survived three different shootouts, was eulogized by his own son, also Joe, then eight years old. Everyone calls my dad a hero, but I always hear that. God has made my dad one of his policemen. Now he is protecting heaven. Joe had christened his third son, John Michael, just 10 days before 9-11. And now the baby's grandparents focused on recovering the remains of their oldest, John Jr., a member of Ladder 132, the father of two little girls. From October to May, John Vigiano forged a tight brotherhood with other retired firefighters, scraping through the rock and steel, sometimes in the rain, searching for signs of the sons who had joined their profession. Like John Vigiano, Lieutenant Dennis Oberg never found his namesake. He was either in the tower, the South Tower, or in the hotel area. The Vigianos held John's memorial a week before the city closed Ground Zero putting his personal mementos into a casket. That's what's killing me. I, we have nothing of it. Two days later, John Sr. held hands with the other fire dads at the National Memorial Day concert. <music> Jan Vigiano still feels her son's presence. Three weeks after releasing balloons on John's birthday, she was reflecting at the Trade Center site. All of a sudden, a blue balloon come down. Let me know. I said, well, he's let me know he's there. In mid-July, Jan Vigiano convinced her husband to attend a ceremony sponsored by the Paris Fire Brigade, where the New York City Fire Department received France's highest medal of valor. It's probably the most rewarding experience I've ever had. And then they took us up to Normandy. 
the cemetery where more than 9,000 American soldiers are buried after the battle to take back Europe from Hitler's grip. Pearl Harbor, Gettysburg, Normandy. I said, there's another one. It's called the World Trade Center. Last month at FDNY Appreciation Night, the Vigianos joined other fire families brought together by loss to enjoy a Brooklyn Cyclone baseball game. We escaped reality. You know, I love baseball. I was with friends that uh, all of us, uh, we bleed internally. But last night, there was no bloodshed. It was just laughs, good times. Mary, uh, a day doesn't go by that I don't cry. Yet John Vigiano has channeled his grief into something positive, helping to build a ramp and backyard deck for one-year-old Tyler Vranick, who suffers from a neuromuscular disorder. If I go there with uh, Tyler, I'm, I'm okay. And the Vigianos take great delight in their five grandchildren, John's two girls. Nicolette, she's a spitting image of a father. And Joe's three boys. So I got my kids back, a little smaller version. A lovely sentiment for a dad who now collects stories from his son's colleagues to give to his grandkids, a father who doesn't regret not getting a final farewell. He spoke to each of his sons before they began every one of their shifts. There was the same conversation every week. Be careful. I love you. I love you too, Dad. And hopefully someday I'll be up there with them because I know where they are.